Hello everyone, I have something really, really exciting for today's Daz tutorial. And I don't get excited about things very much, but this one is really, really cool. I just found out a new trick to do uh, interior lighting, and this is a game changer. It is really changing the way that I approach interior lighting. It is super, super simple, very easy to use. Um, so if you're new here or if you haven't yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell um, because I've got lots more great Daz tutorials coming up. But uh, let's go ahead and jump right into our topic. So today we're talking about interior lighting with something called ghost lighting or ghost lights. Um, I recently found out about this while I was browsing through the Daz uh, 3D store. So I'll be sure and post a link to this below. But essentially this is just a really, really simple lighting solution for internal lights um, or for interior lights. Um, so essentially a ghost light is um, kind of like using a primitive as a light source, how I did in one of my previous videos. Um, I'll post a link to that above if you want to check that one out. But this is a lot simpler and the cool thing about ghost lights is that they're invisible in the render, uh, which um, as far as I'm aware you can't do with primitives as, as a lighting source. Uh, so if you ever use a primitive it basically turns the entire surface into a light bulb. So if it's in your render, uh, if it's in front of the camera, if it's reflected in a mirror, you just have basically this gigantic white light uh, that, that you'll be staring at. But this doesn't do that. It's a very, and it appears to be very, um, uh, appears to be more efficient than using a primitive as well. So I'll go ahead and jump right in. So again, uh, this, um, oh, uh, let me talk about my scene setup real quick. Um, I'm using an HDRI uh, background and lighting right now for the outside. Um, I'm using an excellent uh, HDRI uh, night sky kit from Orestes. Um, I'll be sure to post a link to that in the description below if you want to check it out, but I'll give you a quick preview of what it looks like outside of the room. There we go, so we've got this great night sky background uh, that casts a kind of a cold glow over everything. All right, let's go back inside. And you'll notice that that casts a little bit of light inside the room, but not a whole lot. It's having trouble reaching everywhere. So these ghost lights work best in rooms that have a window, and basically we're going to simulate more light coming in through that window. So the first thing I'm going to go to do uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to go to, there we go, my iRay Ghost Light Kit, and we're going to use a vertical light because it's going to be coming in from the windows. If it were a skylight or something similar, we'd use the horizontal lights, but I'm going to use a vertical light. So we double click that to drop it in the scene, and I'm going to go back to Texture Shaded. There we go. So it gives us this weird kind of checkerboard pattern, and we have some controls over here on the right to move it side to side, up, down and so on and so forth. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is rotate it ori so it's oriented the same way as our window. And I already can see that it's at a 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna go over to the rotate controls and I'm gonna type in negative 90. So if I do it 90 degrees, then it's going to rotate it counterclockwise and it's gonna be pointing outside, which we don't want. So I'm gonna rotate it negative 90 so it rotates clockwise. There we go. And now you can see that arrow is pointing towards the inside of the room. And then I'm going to place this just outside of the window. You could do it inside the window if you wanted, but if you do it outside of the window, then um, it's going to create a neat uh, uh, shadow with the, uh, with the window pane. So I think that might be kind of cool. All right, and I'm going to make sure, I'm going to stretch it to make sure that it covers um, the entire window, um, even with this uh, sheet hanging up. So um, you have a Y scale option and that's gonna stretch it upwards that way. And I'm gonna show you one other control, which is the X scale. And the X scale doesn't only stretch it one direction, it stretches it two directions, it goes side to side. So you wanna do that to put it just about over the window. It doesn't have to be perfect, just close enough. There we go, so that's covering the entire window on the outside. All right, um, after that, we have to apply the um, ghost setup. As it says, apply before presets. So we're gonna make sure that our ghost light is selected, and it is, and then we're gonna double click that, and that's going to make our uh, panel disappear in the render, but it's still going to be casting light when we go into iRay view. 
um, and next we can go to intensity presets. So this basically selects just how bright the light is, how intense it is. Uh, lower degrees, like it goes all the way down to 50 Kelvin, up to I think, let's see, there's a thousand, yeah, up to a thousand Kelvin is the brightest that it goes. Um, and you also have time of day presets. Um, so you can set a lower temperature light or a higher temperature light. On here, for some reason, the temperatures go backwards. If you have some experience with um, digital cameras or with uh, photography lighting, um, generally the hotter a light is, the more red shifted it is, and the colder it is, the more shifted to the blue it is. For some reason on Daz, it's different. I'm not really sure why. Um, but we also have sunrise, overcast, and then neutral daylight uh, presets. So let me go ahead and switch to our camera. Um, I've already got that in place where I want it. And I'm going to go to iRay View. There we go. So right now I don't have any presets applied, so you can see everything is pretty dark. Just a little bit of light coming in. So the first thing I like to do is to use the intensity preset. So let's start at 300K. There we go, so already you can see that it's much more well lit. And not only that, but the whole room pretty much is very evenly lit. Let's try 400. Yeah, I think I like that even better. So I want this to be kind of gloomy and dark, but uh, still well and, uh, lit well enough that you can see everything. I think that's gonna work well. Let's go to time of day presets, and I'm gonna put it on a very blue preset. We're gonna do 9,000, it's as high as it goes. There we go, so now it's got kind of a bluish, kind of a moonlit glue. There we go. And there are also um, several artificial light presets. You can do a candle, computer monitor, halogen bulb, and then warm, neutral, and cold LEDs. Uh, I'll try a couple of those just to show you what they look like. Candle is gonna look like a flame. That one's not gonna work so great because I'm using such a large pane, so it's gonna look like there's just a huge fire raging about three feet away from our, from our subject. Um, we can do a halogen. I kind of like that, kind of a nice warm glue. Uh, then we have a cold LED. That one's not too bad. Neutral. And finally, warm. I like that one a lot. But I'm going to put that back to where we had it, though, just the cold light. 9000 Kelvin. Yeah. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and um, hit the render button on that. That's really all there is to it. That's all you have to do, just that one light. And actually, I'll, I'll pan around a little bit just so you can see how evenly lit everything is. Again, just from putting one light, just a few clicks. And it's just excellent, absolutely excellent. All right, let me go back to my camera, and we'll hit the render button on that and check out the finished product in just a minute. And here we are with our finished renders. Just for an A-B comparison, I did a render with no lights at all in the scene. This is just from the ambient light coming in from the HDRI uh, background. And then this one is the finished product with that one ghost light. Absolutely dramatic difference. And if I put a, if I did that with a primitive, I don't think it would have gotten as even lighting and it definitely would have taken longer to get all of the settings just right. Having the presets there is very, very nice and again, very simple to use. And if I wanted to, I could have pointed the camera right at the window and I wouldn't be able to see the light. Like I'd only be able to see, you know, I wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't be like staring at a light bulb like if I used a primitive. So if you like this, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more great, easy to follow Daz tutorials and check the description below. Like I said, I'll post a link to the, uh, to the ghost lights in the, uh, in the Daz 3D store. And this is just, I can't wait to mess around with this some more. I've, I've only played around with it a little bit, but I feel like I've only just scratched the surface of what I can do with this. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.